in the finance space, there is just never a shortage of dumb people on YouTube doing extremely dumb things with their money. And today is no different as we finally have one of these YouTubers who did something really stupid with his money just straight up come clean and admit that he lost millions of dollars, which was already public knowledge literally like two months ago when a YouTuber named uh, Jesse with Stone Cold Investors basically exposed and broke down that Paul with everything money lost about five million dollars uh, shorting NVIDIA stock. And the funniest thing about it is Paul didn't just short NVIDIA stock. He did it in a really dumb way. He did it through an option strategy that most even sophisticated investors, I would say, don't even know about. Like, I can't name very many people who even know what naked calls are. You know what I mean? Like, most people don't know what that is. If you ask most people, they're, they're going to have to look that up. But that's what this guy did. So first, let's go ahead and just play a little snippet from the video. I'm not going to bore you guys too much, but we're just going to play a little bit of this video where, you know, the title right here says, I lost millions so you don't have to. So here's what Paul had to say about him losing millions of dollars trying to short NVIDIA. And that's when I lost my big money. And that's where I sit there and say, okay, didn't come close to burying me. That's awesome. I lost 10 or 12% of my net worth, which is a chunk, but at the same point, I also made a lot of money off of selling covered calls, having this right here is pretty much all that you need to know. So he admits that he lost 10 to 12 percent of his net worth. And I understand some people are going to say, you know, well, it's not that big of a deal for him because he's rich, blah, blah, blah. But what I need you guys to understand is one, the pattern, the, the pattern of if this guy, number one, he's never outperformed in any market ever. That, that's number one. He has a pattern of consistently underperforming. This is why I say that as bad as Jeremy and Kevin are, and they're bad, as bad as some of these YouTube grifters are, I would actually argue that everything money is worse than all of them, just strictly in terms of performance. Obviously, in terms of the clownery and, you know, I would say everything money is better than some of the other grifters and other aspects of investing. But if we're just talking about just overall performance, these guys are the worst. They didn't perform well in 2021. As a matter of fact, they missed out on a lot of the money. OK, they didn't perform well in 2021. They don't like Bitcoin, which performs well. They don't like tech, which performs well. Then when 2022 came around. That was the opportunity for a lot of investors to buy stocks at very cheap valuations. That was actually a huge opportunity. You know, you had stocks like Netflix, Meta, you know, different things like that. And these guys were literally posting these ridiculous price targets. And they were basically like, I'm just paraphrasing it. They didn't exactly say this, but they were making videos where they were basically saying like, oh, I wouldn't buy Amazon unless it went to $15. You know, I wouldn't buy Netflix unless, it, unless it, like, let's say Netflix is at like, you know, like $200 or $150, which at that time probably wouldn't have been a good buy. These guys would make a video in 2022 and they'd be like, I wouldn't buy Netflix unless it went to $45. Like they were saying crazy stuff that would never happen. So underperformed in 2021 because they didn't want to buy crypto. They don't like crypto. They didn't want to buy tech. They don't like tech. They don't like small caps. They, they don't like anything. So they didn't want to do that. 2022, when you should have been buying, they were like, oh, the, they're, they're still too high. They're still too overvalued. I'm not buying. So they missed that. So they underperformed those two years. 2023, same thing. They started buying weird stocks like, I don't know, like Smith & Wesson and 3M and all this weird stuff that nobody really cares too much about. Still didn't outperform. And this year, not only are they not outperforming, Paul is significantly underperforming the market. This is what I need you guys to understand. It's one thing for him to say, okay, well, I've lost 10 to 12% of my net worth. And some of you guys who are fans of him might be like, oh, well, he's already a multimillionaire. He's rich, whatever. Doesn't No, no, no. He's significantly, if you lost 10 to 12% of your net worth in one year, that means you have significantly underperformed the market. And I need you to understand because he follows this up by saying, you know, he's trying to do like damage control. He's like, Oh, well, even though I lost, you know, 10 to 12% of my net worth. Oh, well, you know, I did other things to hedge myself. I did this. Well, if you did certain things to hedge yourself, that means that you wouldn't have lost 10 to 12% of your net worth, actually, if you hedged yourself and you made money to like offset those losses. But he didn't say that. First, he said he lost 10 to 12% of his net worth. He didn't clarify. Bottom line is whether you hedge yourself or not, I don't really care. The fact that you lost millions of dollars, 
And according to Jesse with Stone Cold Investors, you lost you lost five million dollars. That tells me right now you've already underperformed in 2024 and you're going to underperform in 2024. He is going to end the year significantly underperforming you, me, and the market. So so that's really what this whole thing is all about. That is what my criticism, my main issue with Paul with everything money is, is he's just a terrible investor. Now, the other thing I want to say is in this video, because I'm not going to play this whole 15 minute video. I'm just going to explain to you what he said. He made this video saying, I lost millions, so you don't have to. And he didn't actually talk about the NVIDIA short too much. He spent maybe about two to three minutes about it. And what he tried to do was a trick that a lot of other YouTubers will do. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to break down the tricks. So he's trying to frame it like, oh, I made a mistake. I did something, you know, I made a huge mistake. I miscalculated in shorting NVIDIA and I apologize. And then he starts to break down other mistakes he made, like with Amazon and other stocks and stuff like that. No, I need you guys to understand what this is about. And I need you guys to understand the trick. He's trying to make you think that all of this was a mistake. You don't mistakenly lose millions of dollars if you're supposed to be a guru investor. No, you don't. At least not when you have the net worth he has. I know people are going to bring up Warren Buffett. Bear with me here. Warren Buffett's a billionaire, okay? Warren Buffett's not losing 10 to 12% of his net worth, okay? That's not a mistake. His lose, Him losing millions of dollars in NVIDIA was not a mistake. It was him shorting a stock using a method that he knew nothing about. I guarantee you, he didn't even know what naked, uh, uh, buying naked calls was. I bet you he didn't even know what that was before he did it. Guarantee you he didn't. And even if he knew what the term was, guarantee you he didn't understand it. That's why he got absolutely destroyed, okay? So it's not a mistake. It's one thing to say, I'm bearish on NVIDIA. I wouldn't buy it here. I'm wrong. It's another thing to buy naked calls on it where you have an unlimited downside okay that extremely risky that that's not a mistake that's paul not knowing what the hell he's doing that's why he did that and that's why he lost so much money because he didn't make a mistake he doesn't know what the crap he's doing that's why he underperforms in every market he doesn't know what he's doing that's why he goes on the internet and says, I'm a value investor, but then he has day trading courses that most sells. And then he's shorting stocks when you're supposed to be a value investor, losing millions of dollars shorting NVIDIA on naked calls when you're supposed to be a value investor. This guy doesn't know what he's doing, okay? Let me show you another video. Jesse with Stone Cold Investors. Check his channel out. I love his channel. His video right here says down five plus million dollars. Paul from Everything Money and his NVIDIA short. I'm going to play a little bit of the video because I want you guys to understand how unbelievably stupid and just ridiculous of an investor Paul is. So Jesse's going to break down exactly what buying naked calls, like all it entails and exactly how ridiculously risky it is. Let's just play a little bit of the video. Here we go. Is that we're going to get a nice credit for selling this call. Okay. We're going to get a nice credit of 11,500 for selling that call. Uh, let's go to 500 actually, uh, 500 strike. So 11,200, it's basically at the money. We're pretty much selling an at the money call. So our premium is pretty good. It's a $11,710 premium per contract. But here's the thing. So if we're selling a naked call and the stock goes up, well, your losses are unlimited. So, you're capping, you're capping your um, your total gain to the premium you receive, right? And then we can increase the range here, and we can see that the uh, max loss, as as so nicely defined in option strat, the max loss right here shows infinite, right? Infinite. <laughs> so <laughs> you might make eleven grand if they expire worthless, and you're selling these calls. Um, you also could lose you know an infinite amount of money which i don't know about you but that sounds like a pretty pretty bad deal um so. okay so jesse with stone Cold investors broke that down perfectly so paul entered a short in a way where he gets a limited upside and an unlimited downside his max profit has a limit to it there's only a certain amount of money he can make in his max profit if the short goes well. But if it doesn't go well, his max loss 
is unlimited. That is why he lost such a ridiculous amount of money. Now, if you look at, and this is the other thing, his pride really got in the way of, of him with this whole thing. This is another reason why he just, at the end of the day, had no business doing this. Because when you look at hedge funds and big money, the big whales who really know what they're doing, they are so smart and they are so good at finding ways to either not lose money, even if they're wrong, or they lose a very small amount of money. That That's what the real smart people know what they're doing, dude. They have ways to make it so that, you know, if they can see that something's not going their way, they're just going to get out of it. Paul didn't do that. It took for Paul to lose $5 million to finally get out of his short. I need you guys to understand something. If you look right here at this video, this is where he first announced that he shorted NVIDIA. This was six months ago. When he said that, NVIDIA was at 400 and looks like, $71, something like that, okay? And that's when he announced it. We don't even know when he actually did it. Could have been before then, okay? Good play there. That's so, why I did it. LB, Sorry. I'm not a fan of it. That's my take. Sorry, the video was playing. Okay. <laughs> uh, So you have that, but when you look here on the website and you look at the exact date that he shorted, which if I'm not mistaken, no, not that he shorted, that he closed, which I believe was... February 7th. So as you saw, he shorted about six months ago when NVIDIA was at uh, $470. When you look at when he closed the short, which was on February 7th, NVIDIA closed the end of that day at $700. So while he was shorting NVIDIA and telling everybody that NVIDIA is overvalued, it's ridiculous, which, yeah, he might have been right about that maybe. Well, actually, I don't know because the thing is sitting at like, almost $900 at this point. So for all I know, he probably isn't right. But the bottom line is, do you know how crazy you have to be? And do you understand how bad of an investor you have to be to short a stock with millions of dollars at stake and watch the stock just slowly climb from $471 to $700? That should tell you everything you need to know about how stupid this guy is and how bad of an investor he is. When NVIDIA got to 550, he didn't close the short. When NVIDIA got to 580, he didn't close it. 600, he didn't close it. 650, he didn't close it. Oh, it, it gets all the way from 470 to 700, then he finally closes it and loses $5 million. This is the degeneracy and foolishness you see on YouTube. It, it just, it will never cease to amaze me how people can actually buy this guy's software. And actually take this guy seriously. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how anybody could take this guy seriously. He doesn't know what he's doing. He never outperforms in any market. He underperforms every year. He's going to underperform this year. He lost a crap ton of money. Don't let him fool you with this BS sob story bullcrap video where he's like, I lost millions, so you don't have to. Take this, guys, as a learning mistake. This was not a learning mistake. This was nothing for you to learn from. If there's anything you should be learning, it should be how to unsubscribe from him. That's what it should be, because that's what you need to do. He sucks. He doesn't know anything. Don't buy his software. Don't listen to him. Unsubscribe from the channel. The guy's nuts. Man's is out here playing with daddy's money. Gonna mess around and ruin his father's entire legacy by losing all the money doing dumb stuff, okay? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.